Well, welcome everyone to the July 12th public council meeting for the town of Conception Bay South. Another beautiful night here in CBS and we're right in the middle of the Kellegrew Soiree. So let's get right to business now so everyone can get out and enjoy the evening. Adoption of agendas and minutes. We're going to start with an adoption of the meeting agenda for July 12th. Do I have a motion? Councillor Barrett, seconded by Councillor Connors. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Adoption of the meeting minutes from June 14th, a month ago. Do I have a mover? Deputy Mayor Goss, seconder. Councillor Butler, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Business arising from previous minutes will be dealt with through this meeting and future meetings, of course. We don't have any visitors presentations or petitions tonight, but I will say this, our public council meetings are finally, again, public council meetings, and the public is welcome to join us here in chambers to watch the meetings live, or in the comfort of their home, of course, or wherever they may be, uh, through YouTube. So, new business. We're gonna start off this evening with Deputy Mayor Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Uh, I wanna start off this evening and just say thank you to the staff and uh, our town staff and volunteers of Swarry 2022. Uh, every, the events uh, started on Saturday and so far our events have been well attended and a huge success. Um, thank you to Mother Nature for bringing on the great weather which have certainly helped. And tonight is the outdoor movie at the CBS Arena at nine o'clock. And uh, events throughout the rest of the week winding up on Friday night at Topsail Beach with the last blast on Topsail Beach. Uh, next item I want to bring mention to uh, is uh, the drive-in bingo is back at the CBS Arena parking lot. And this is, uh, this is in support of the Field of Dreams at All Saints Road uh, for the, held by the CBS uh, Minor Softball Association. So this uh, July the 21st and August the 4th are the dates for the next two drive-in bingos. Gates open at 6 o'clock and bingo starts at 7 p.m. So uh, get your gang together and get out and try some uh, drive-in bingo and support the Field of Dreams. And another item I want to mention is the uh, Manuals River Barber Race 50-50 tickets are on sale now. And actually the deadline for the early bird ticket draw is today at midnight. And the prize, uh, the early bird prize, is the mini manual greenhouse valued at $7,000 or a cash uh, prize of $5,000. Tickets are $25 each, and you, or you can buy them in groupings of up to 10 tickets for $100, and the jackpot is growing daily. Support Manuals River and get in the race to catch the cash. And my final item, as your chair of finance, this is just a friendly reminder that municipal assessments went out last month and if you intend to file an appeal, it must be done by July 31st with the Municipal Assessments Agency. And if you have any questions, just give a call down to the Finance Department. That's everything I have this evening, Mayor Bent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Goss. I'll turn it over to Councillor Gerard Tilley. Thank you, Worship. Uh, just two, two, I guess, uh, items I'd like to bring uh, accolades to a couple of residents in Conception Bay South. Uh, the first one was on, uh, on June, Thursday, June 30th, the Molson Corps St. John Senior Men's Passage League witnessed for the first time in their 66 year history that brothers pitched against each other in league play. Now, of course, someone's probably going to wonder, well, why am I mentioning St. John's uh, Senior Men's Passage League? But uh, the two brothers happened to hail from Conception Bay South. So uh, when the line of cards were submitted and the pitching match was confirmed, the following question was asked, and so, you know, was this, has this ever happened before? That uh, two brothers, uh, uh, I guess, uh, pitched each other opposingly. And of course, they went, like I say, they traced back to the history of 60, 66 years, and they even thought about uh, Ford and Fraser Metcalf, but at no time ever did they play against each other. So uh, I'd like to send out a, a huge congratulations to Logan and Lyndon Power, uh, two fine, upstanding uh, athletes here in Conception Bay South, uh, masters in their, in their sport of softball and uh, those two guys went toe to toe on the 30th of June and uh, of course the uh, the elder brother uh, Logan was victorious over Lyndon but I'm sure that uh, they're both uh, quite happy that they, they made history 
and uh, in the St. John's senior senior circuit, and of course, uh, definitely a, a, a good way to uh, to recognise those two fine young gentlemen from concession base out in the in the softball world. So congratulations to uh, Logan and Lyndon Power. Uh, as well, the second one, uh, be remiss, uh, and of course, I don't know if anyone else is going to bring it up later on this evening, but uh, our director of recreation, Dave Thibault, uh, after a 35-year uh, devoted service to the town, Dave decided to uh, call it a career. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of myself and, of course, uh, everyone else in council can certainly speak to it after that. Uh, I've had the opportunity to know Dave uh, way before my, my years on council, back in, back in my teenage years, and... Uh, Dave's worth eth ethic was uh, second to none, and uh, we will certainly miss miss Dave here around the council table, and uh, and I wish him all the best. Uh, you know, 35 years, he he thought the time was right, and uh, I wish him all the best in all of his future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Tilly. Councillor Connors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I also wanted to. Mentioned Dave Thibault's uh, retirement from the recreation, director of recreation. Uh, and as he was with the town for 36 years, to be honest, and he spent 29, so according to my calculations, it was 19 or 20 when he started with the town. Uh, he started out working at the old dump, and then he went to the sewage treatment plant in Topsail. And from there, he worked his way up through the ranks to where he got to be in the position of Director of Re Recreation and Leisure Services, and he held that position for 21 years. Um, as an athlete and an organizer and everything growing up, growing up that was certainly a, a fitting job for Dave. Uh, sad to see him go, but he certainly has turned, uh, has earned the opportunity to his retirement. Uh, as a person who's involved in recreation myself, I've seen over the years what Dave has done for our community, and uh, I've known Dave for a long time as well, and it's from, from putting lights on fields to construction of new fields, uh, skate parks, dog parks, uh, soccer field with artificial turf, uh, the new stadium, it goes on to seniors event and goes on. So for the past 21 years, Dave has uh, professionally led our recreation leader uh, department with passion, pride, and understanding, and I wish him all the best uh, as he moves into his next phase of life, which I think there's probably going to be karaoke involved because I saw him a couple of weeks, and, and he's sort of pretty active in the karaoke field. So all the best to Dave in his retirement. Turn me off. <laughs> uh, this week, the Shoreline published an article on, uh, on Mr. Norm Simpson. And, uh, and I wanted to just take the, a moment to say thank you to, the, uh, to Craig Westcott and, and the Shoreline for, for doing this because it really showed like uh, a volunteer who's now 84 years old who's been volunteering in our community uh, quite a bit and for many, many years. As is stated in the article, it'll be hard to find someone who's, say, 50 plus in Conception Bay South, who wasn't, wasn't coached or been involved with a league or something where Norm Simpson was involved. So uh, I'm not gonna go into the details of the article, but I recommend that everyone grab a uh, copy of the Shoreline and go to page six and read the article, Still Mr. Simpson, because that's how we all refer to him as Mr. Simpson. So uh, for that, I, I want to say thank you to the Shoreline, and I hope they continue to do some uh, more articles on people who volunteer in our, uh, in our stories for people who volunteer in Conception Bay South. And uh, I want to say thank you to Norm Simpson for all he's done for Conception Bay South as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Connors. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I do have a few items uh, related to economic development, but I think I'll wait to do them before I do my recommendation at committee time. So I'll just take a few minutes to do uh, some other little notes of interest now. First of all, I'd also like to congratulate Dave Thibault on his retirement. Uh, I've only known Dave for the time I've been a councillor, but I can tell you that his uh, 
professional, respectful way that he did, performed his duties, uh, dealing with counselors and with all staff, second to none. A very respectful person and showed the mo utmost of respect for everybody he dealt with. So I wish Dave all the best in his retirement, and I'm sure that deck that he's got there is uh, getting a lot of use, and uh, his arm's getting used a lot, too. <laughs> so I congratulate him. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I got my bobber tickets. <laughs> got them before the deadline, so uh, maybe I'll win one of these years. Uh, the soiree, as, as mentioned already, I mean, staff, our two program supervisors, I mean, they've been amazing. I mean, I've been at a number of events, and the organization that goes into uh, putting off all of the events that we have, and we have a lot of events this time. I mean, it's just wonderful. I've had so many people say, you know, Christine, you got so much on the go here this year. It's great to see everything, and great to see so many people. And uh, I mean, I've been at, uh, I was at the 8, 8 KM race. I didn't uh, participate in it, but I did watch every runner leave, and I watched every runner come back, right till the very last runner. And I gave medals to a good many of them, and I was so proud of them all, and I, I clapped my hands and cheered them on coming over the finish line. Um, I was at the market at the marina. I was at the Parsons Field Family Day, and that was very well attended. Uh, what a beautiful day for us. I dropped down to the big rodeo this mo earlier today just to uh, check on the quiet time, and you wouldn't believe the number of uh, families that were there for the quiet hour. And the uh, fire truck, of course, was the most uh, popular item there. And I uh, attended the Queen's Platinum Jubilee afternoon tea before I came here this evening. And that was well attended at the St. John Evangelist Church. And we even had an appearance by the Queen. Wow. And she was shaking her hand like she does, you know, the wave. So anyway, I think that's it for me for now until I get around to committee. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Mayor Bent. So before school was closed for the summer, there were a few accolades for a couple of teachers in Conception Bay South, as well as one student that I wanted to highlight briefly here. The provincial government announced the recipients of the 2022 Teaching Awards, and two Conception Bay South teachers were recognized with the 2022 Premier's Award for Teaching Innovation. And so these two individuals were Mr. Christopher Butler of St. George's Elementary. Uh, as, as Paul mentioned, you might have seen that story in, in the shoreline. And Mr. Jeffrey Locke with Holy uh, Spirit High. And this award recognizes primary, elementary, or secondary teachers in all disciplines who have demonstrated innovation and instruction and a commitment to preparing students for future success. So I just wanted to, on behalf of council, congratulate these individuals and thank them for uh, the time they spend uh, enriching our, our, the lives of our students here in the community. Uh, and, and one more uh, piece I want to mention is that Haley Lewis, a student of Holy Spirit High, is the latest provincial recipient of the Lester B. Pearson Scholarship. So this is a scholarship valued at $50,000 for over two years for pre-university study. And so Ms. Lewis will attend uh, Pearson College in Victoria, British Columbia, and it's um, a uh, pre-university uh, boot camp that's uh, internationally recognized and um, hopefully provides her uh, opportunities for success moving forward. So I wanted to congratulate Ms. Lewis for her success and best of luck as she enters this program. That's it, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Barrett. And uh, of course we have some councillors away this week, so uh, a little shortened go around. I have a few things myself uh, uh, to mention. The first one, uh, is uh, regarding uh, our plans for a regional community center. So year after year, Conception Bay South continues to see impressive growth. And with that growth comes a strong need uh, for a more community lifestyle infrastructure here in our town. Further, th further to that, Conception Bay South's facilities and businesses already service numerous communities around this end of the Avalon Peninsula. And due to our strategic location, our size, and a regional hub for events, sports events, all kinds of different activities, celebrations. Uh, a new community center in CBS would naturally be regional in nature and therefore benefiting many residents and families right here in Conception Bay South and outside of our borders as well. So in 2021, 
the town began developing a recreation and culture master plan which consisted of gathering comprehensive feedback from residents in CBS on our infrastructure needs. Uh, through this detailed process, one fact was made very clear. Residents want and need a community center. The necessity was further exposed during the COVID-19 pandemic when many facilities outside the town's control were closed and cut off to our residents and our groups in the community. Council continues to progress a plan to make a community center in this town a reality and we're moving a little step further tonight. Council's preferred site location for the new facility will be at the gateway. We believe this is the perfect site because it's centrally located within the town and it's already the location of recreation and tourism facilities like the CBS Arena, Sergeant Ned Nugent's outdoor complex, the integrated trail network and nearby Robert French Memorial Stadium. As we continue to advance our economic development strategy to bring more businesses to this area, we believe a regional community center at this location will help bolster desired retail development at the gateway. Another big uh, thing about having it at the gateway is we don't have to go out and spend taxpayers money on the land. We already own it. That will help cut back on the cost of doing this project. The current draft recreation and culture master plan indicates the needs for such a facility and that would include amenities like performing arts space, social rooms and recreation space. Through continued public engagement, our goal was to have a concept plan advanced by the end of this year which will give us a better idea of exactly what amenities would be included as well as cost estimates. And we understand that we will need funding, we will need support from our provincial and federal counterparts to make this center a reality. And that's something that we're working on as we speak. Conversations about funding applications are well underway. Council continues to work to make our vision of a regional community center a reality and we look forward to updating our residents every step of the way. So tonight we are announcing that our preferred location and, our in, and we'll start doing our next step in this process with design engineering work uh, over the coming months to get ready to work with our provincial counterparts and our federal counterparts to make a community center a reality for Conception Bay South and its residents. And I can say it's absolutely badly needed and I think everyone around this table agrees and uh, we look forward to moving further into the process over the coming months. Now, on to another item that uh, is something that you wouldn't expect to hear, maybe, unless you know the person well. Uh, I thought I did, but I didn't. So, on behalf of council and residents, I'm going to extend a congratulations to CBS resident Terry Parsons, well known for Parsons Bus, Parsons Bus and Sons, and he didn't win a transportation award. He actually was recognized uh, nationally as Blues Booster of the Year by the Toronto Blues Society. And the Canadian National Blues Awards program promotes blues music across Canada and recognizes outstanding achievement in the field. And I have a little item here I want to read that comes from the uh, Toronto Blues Fest where Mr. Parsons won the award. And it says, Conception Bay South Newfoundland's Terry Parsons began his radio career in 1977 at CHMR as an on-air newsreader. It was the start of a 45-year love affair with music in all forms, and in particular, the blues. His signature radio program, The Blind Lemon Blues, started completely by accident in 2002 after a trip to the Ottawa Blues Festival to interview artists for another show called The Songwriters. Beyond Blind Lemon Blues, Parsons spent 11 years promoting live events in Newfoundland. In addition to radio, he works with the Maple Blues Steering Committee and writes reviews for the Maple Blues magazine and supports artists and their music as best he can through his radio shows and the Sunday Morning Hangover Cure radio show. Parsons' reaction was one of humor and humility, and this is how they quote uh, Terry, I am honored. Uh, I am honored beyond words. It is so humbling to win this prestigious award when I found out I was speechless, which in my wife's eyes is a good thing. They finally found a way to shut me up. So congratulations to Terry Parsons on being recognized nationally with this Blues Award. It's a great accomplishment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to uh, want to 
uh, take a moment on, to speak to a couple of other things. And as a, a, a couple of people have already mentioned, uh, longtime uh, town employee Dave Thibault uh, retired, uh, I guess, over the past week or so after 30 odd years uh, serving the residents. And uh, I just want to say that, uh, it, it, uh, to be honest, I, fe I feel that uh, uh, Dave's uh, uh, retirement was well deserved, but it is a loss to us here. Um, he is one of those people, well, he's, he's a true gentleman, always has been, treats everybody with respect, but I think the greatest asset that we're losing uh, from Dave, and I know that we'll be able to uh, move forward uh, in, in other ways uh, now that he's moved on, but he is a residence first individual, and he always worked well with the residents, and we greatly appreciated all he has done for recreation in our town and uh, working with our residents to ensure that things are done the way they're supposed to be. So congratulations, Dave. We're going to miss you, but uh, enjoy your retirement. I noticed that uh, the deputy mayor posted a picture on social media of Dave Thibault in his office with a balloon. I gave him that balloon, by the way. Anyway, um, I also gave him a, 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 a set of golf balls for when it's nice out, and I gave him a Scrabble game for when it's not. So he's got lots to do over the next few months anyway. Um, I also want to uh, uh, say uh, uh, to the shoreline, as well as uh, Councillor Connors, um, a great job on featuring Norm Simpson. And I think that, uh, you know, it, when I was reading it and looking it over, I thought to myself, you know, what a fantastic series to capture history of uh, volunteer and volunteerism and uh, the sports community. And uh, by featuring uh, uh, Mr. Simpson, I call him Norm uh, because I didn't know him from the time I was a child. So, uh, but uh, he, a great volunteer. And I can't imagine going uh, to any of the sports awards or anything like that and Norm not being there. And uh, uh, so uh, it's great to see him featured there. And uh, if you get a chance, have a look at it. Also, the 10th annual Ride for Riley is being held July 16th. Starts at 10 a.m. from Villanova Junior High. And uh, this ride, I understand from Louise, is going to be probably their last ride. Um, I hope that uh, if, if you're interested in the ride or want to ride, you can find Louise Mercer on uh, social media. Uh, they have tickets that they're selling, and uh, they also have uh, the ride that uh, takes place through our community. Uh, fantastic event. It raises... Uh, raises money to uh, help uh, uh, children that are uh, suffering from cancer uh, going through their treatments and to support their families when they're away from home. Um, also, uh, with the soiree, uh, it's been great uh, so far. The weather has been fantastic, and uh, uh, myself and a few of the counselors uh, flipped a lot of pancakes on Saturday morning. I think we served up uh, over, well, somewhere around 600 people for pancakes, which was uh, great. Um, we had the garden party on Saturday evening, and I'm told 12 to 1,300, maybe more, were on hand for that event, which is fantastic. And uh, last night, um, I was up to the Open Mike S'mores Fest at the Community Garden. They put off a great event up there, and thank you to the Community Garden Committee for the work they did up there. And uh, also on Sunday, down to the Family Folk Festival, we had great entertainment down there. It was a little windy, but uh, people seemed to enjoy it anyway. And uh, uh, just a few things coming up, and I know probably uh, Councillor Butler is going to go through them in detail, but we're looking forward to Clara Nolan's barbecue on Thursday. Uh, great event for the seniors, starts at noon at the Legion, and uh, we're also uh, looking forward to the last blast on the beach uh, at Topsail Beach on Friday evening, but there's lots between here and there, including something that I'm apparently I'm going to try my dog out in to see if she... Uh, will act reasonably well to get through the dog walk down to the uh, dog park, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, other than that, I think I've uh, gone through everything on my list, so we're going to pop into the business of the town now and recommendations of the Planning and Development Committee, and Chair Councillor Rex Hillier is not here this evening, but in his place we have ah, Councillor Josh Barrett. So Councillor Barrett, take it away. Thank you, Your Worship, and there's a few motions here this evening, so folks, bear with me. Uh, the following are recommendations of the Planning and Development Committee meeting, which took place Monday, July 4th. 5A, 619 to 621 Seal Cove Road. Be it so resolved that application number 1747 dated May 30th, 2022, for the subdividing of the property located at 
619 to 621 Seal Cove Road into three lots be approved with a reduced minimum lot frontage of 19.8 meters for the two new lots that will front onto Seal Cove Road. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Connors, discussion? Yes, Your Worship, we had a few public notices on this one and uh, some mail outs and all the feedback thus far has been positive and we're in a position to recommend approval this evening. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5B, 7 Hickman Place. Be it so resolved that in accordance Section 5.3.4 and Council's discretionary authority of Section 5.33 of the Town's Development Regulations, application number 1664, dated May 17th, 2022, for a 78-meter square um, accessory building at 7 Hickman Place be approved on condition that the accessory building shall not be used for commercial purposes or human habitation. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Mr. Chair, uh, I have declared conflict for 5C, 772 Concession Bay Highway, uh, under the conflict of interest rules. I have a family member who lives in close proximity to that area. Okay. Five C seven seven two Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that in accordance with sections thirteen and fifteen of the town's fence regulations, application seventeen number seventeen thirty two received on May thirty first, twenty twenty two, be approved for a front yard and flanking street side yard fence at seven seven two Conception Bay Highway, on condition that the flanking street side yard fence located behind the rear building line of the dwelling not exceed a height of one point five meters and subject to the approval of the Provincial Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler, discussion? Yes, Your Worship, we have a few recommendations for fences this evening, and I will touch on that again momentarily. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. We're gonna bring in Councillor Tilly. Five D twenty three seventy two and twenty three seventy four Topsail Road B it so resolved that in accordance with Council's discretionary authority at section fifteen of the town's fence regulations application numbers seventeen forty four and seventeen forty five dated june second, twenty twenty two be approved for a front yard fence along the southern boundary of twenty three seventy two and twenty three seventy four Topsail Road on condition that the fence not exceed a height of 1.2 meters and subject to the approval of the Provincial Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, so moved. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5E, 11 Plowman Place. B, it's so resolved that in accordance with Council's discre discretionary authority at section 12 of the town's fence regulations, Application number 1793, dated June 1st, 2022, be approved for a rear yard fence at 11 Plowman Place abutting the trailway, be approved on condition that the fence be a maximum of 2.1 meters high. So moved. Seconder. Council Connors, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Excuse me, Your Worship. I have to declare conflict for 5F. Ted Shoe Place, as uh, my family has a similar business. Okay. Five F Ten Shoot Place. 
Be it so resolved that in accordance with Council's authority at Section 10.8 of the Town's Development Regulations, Application Number 1725, received on May 25th, 2022, proposing to operate an outdoor firewood processing business at 10 Shoot Place, be refused in consideration that the proposed business is not listed as permitted or discretionary use within the residential medium density zone and is therefore a prohibited use. So moved. Seconder. Uh, Councillor Connors, discussion? Yes, Your Worship, this business application came to the town after the residents began operating and they were unaware at the time uh, that there was permits required for this type of business. And so just a reminder, any new business operating in the town requires uh, town and, and, and provincial approval and, and the uh, appropriate permitting from both. And unfortunately, in this case, the type of business proposed is not within the range of businesses that are uh, can be approved at a residential property, particularly in the R2 zone. And um, res uh, council doesn't have discretionary authority to approve, and thus that's why we are recommending refusal this evening. Yes, thank you, Councillor Barrett. And just to clarify for anybody that doesn't know, every business in the town requires a permit. Yes. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. You're going to get the door yourself. <laughs> I've declared a conflict on the next item, the road that is joining this, the front side of this property is my sister lives on it. Okay. Sit. You can show yourself out, Councillor Connors. And your worship, I have to declare a conflict as well. And this one is in the same vicinity as the previous one for the previous reasons. So this drops us below a quorum uh, council. So uh, we'll have to defer this item. No? Quorum is of who's in attendance? Okay. So we still have a majority of those in attendance anyway. A quorum to hold a meeting is five. A quorum to vote is the majority of those who attend the meeting. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mayor Bent. 5G786 Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that in accordance with Council's authority at Section 10.8 of the Town's Development Regulations, Application Number 1752 received on June 3rd, 2022 for a proposed road dwelling development at 786 Conception Bay Highway be refused in consideration that road dwellings are not listed as a permitted or discretionary use within the commercial Main Street C1 zone and is therefore a prohibited use. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler, uh, discussion? Yes, Your Worship. So the zoning of this property is C1, which means that road dwellings are not listed as permitted, nor does Council have discretionary authority to appro uh, approve, uh, hence its prohibited use. It is worth noting, though, that there are several other constraints with the property, uh, given how there's no water and sewer services on, on Crates Lane currently, and the proposed rear building setback is, is far too close than any zoning that we currently have would, would permit. So the applicant certainly has the ability to request council consider an amendment or, or rezoning to accommodate uh, the appropriate use and the town would certainly be willing to help the applicant with a proposal that might uh, be suitable for that uh, area for the current zoning or proposed rezoning. But certainly worth noting that any decision to initiate rezoning is council's and it would require multiple rounds of consultation with the public and immediate neighborhood. So uh, just so residents are aware. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Okay, we can bring back the councillors who are outside the room. This is the smallest group of council I think I've been with in the seven years I've been on council. There we go. All right, 5H22 to 24 Cherry Lane. Be it so resolved that in accordance with council's authority at section 10.8 of the town's development regulations, application number 1867 received on June 21st, 2022, 
for proposed duplex dwelling with subsidiary apartments at 2224 Cherry Lane be refused in consideration that neither apartment dwelling nor duplex dwellings with subsidiary apartments are listed as a permitted or discretionary use within the residential low density zone and is therefore a prohibited use. So moved. Seconder. Your Worship, uh, before you call for the vote, uh, I just realized um, I have two family members, immediate family members who live on Cherry Lane, further out towards the end of the road. Would I be in a conflict of interest? So uh, I can ask council uh, if they feel that uh, Councillor Tilly is in conflict uh, given the location of his uh, uh, relatives on Cherry Lane. Are they towards the water end of the? One, one is on right by the water and the other one is on Marshall's place. Okay, council. Council doesn't believe you're in conflict, uh, Councillor Tilly, uh, given this matter and uh, given the location of the uh, uh, relatives that you have on Cherry Lane. Thank you. Okay. Um, so further discussion? Or? Oh, sorry, seconder. Councillor Butler. Discussion. Yes, Your Worship, this is similar to the previous motion where this type of proposed property is not permitted in the zoning. Uh, they could certainly have a single dwelling with an apartment, but not the duplex or um, uh, row dwellings. But certainly if the applicant wants to work with our staff, they are certainly willing to do so for a potential rezoning application. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5J, uh, J, uh, sorry, I, uh, my apologies. 5A59 Bayview Heights. Be it so resolved that application number 1865 received on June 20th, 2022 for an above ground swimming pool at 59 Bayview Heights be approved on condition that no portion of the pool, pool deck, or security fencing extend forward of the front building line established by the dwelling on the property, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors, discussion. Good time, good year to have a swimming pool, that's for sure. Sure All is. in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5J2493 Topsail Road. Be it so resolved that in accordance with Council's discretionary authority at Section 15 of the Town's Fence Regulations, application number 1870, dated June 21st, 2022, for a front yard fence at 2493 Topsail Road be approved on condition that the fence be a maximum height of 1.2 meters from the front boundary line to the rear building line of the dwelling located at 2495 Topsail Road, and that the fence be a maximum height of 1.8 meters beyond the rear building line of the dwelling located at 2495 Topsail Road and subject to the approval of the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure. So moved. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss, discussion? Yes, Your Worship, this is our fourth motion for, uh, with reference to fence approvals and I just wanna provide some context on why we're handling this at the council level. Most fence applications are reviewed and approved uh, by staff and at the staff level, but there are a few instances where council can provide discretion, such as replacing an existing front yard fence and requests for fences higher than say four feet in the front yard and six feet in the rear yard. So those are some of the, the, contact, the, the motions we've had so far this evening. And just a final note on this front that any new fences proposed on provincial government roads such as Route 60 or Fox Trap Access Road would also require approval from the provincial government. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5K, 1621 and 1627 Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that upon payment of the required processing fee and deposit in accordance with section 14 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, the town undertake initial stakeholder consultation to consider rezoning the property at 1621, 1627 Conception Bay Highway from residential low density zone to 
to residential mixed use zone. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Connor. Discussion. As discussed just briefly a few minutes ago, this is the start of the rezoning process. And so we have been working with this applicant on their proposal at 1621, 1627 Conception Bay Highway. And this involves de developing two eight unit apartment buildings just across from the College of the North Atlantic. And the town has completed its initial work and we're in a position to formalize the public engagement process to hear from residents. And again, any decision to rezone this would be that of council. And so we may see this come back to the table in the next few weeks, months. Thank you, uh, Councilor Barrett. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 5L Seven Pine Tree Road. Be it so resolved that in accordance with council's authority at section 4.12 of the town's development regulations, resolution number 22-127 is hereby rescinded and approval of application number 1284 is hereby revoked in consideration that the applicant has not signed the development approval letter issued on April 20th, 2022. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors. Discussion. Yes, Your Worship. I'm sorry. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, I just want to touch a, a bit upon this one. Uh, it, it's disappointing that the developer, uh, I guess, didn't come in and sign the development approval letter because I, I thought this was a good fit for this area. And as we already proved some uh, uh, seniors housing uh, earlier on in the meeting that the, you know this is just one of the one of the I guess the diehard things that we do need in Conception Bay South uh, you know they're they look nice and and they come at a, a, an affordable cost and it's uh, it's unfortunate the developer has decided to uh, I, I guess the well, council decided to uh, revoke consideration because the applicant didn't follow through on his recommendations but uh, it's unfortunate but let's uh, let's hope he comes back again in the near future. Thank you, Councilor Tilly, and certainly uh, I think this type of housing is needed in the town. And just to note that while the applicant didn't sign within the, pa the within the 30 day window, um, they also withdrew their application. And so um, that is uh, just part of our process to clean up this particular file. Yep. Okay. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. And uh, does anybody else have any further comments on this? Okay. All in favor? Contrary minded. Carried. 5M 1287 to 1295 Concession Bay Highway. B, it's so resolved that under the authority of Section 16 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Concession Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 24 2022 and Development Regulations Amendment Number 42 2022 be adopted and further, be it so resolved that under authority of Section 19 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Mr. Stephen B. Yefchek be appointed as commissioner to hold a public hearing and complete a report respecting municipal amendment number 24, 2022 and development regulations amendment number 42, 2022. And further be it so resolved that in accordance with the directive from the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs, a paper-based public hearing regarding Conception Bay Municipal South Municipal or Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 24 2022 and Development Regulations Amendment Number 42 2022 be held with a supplementary public hearing at 7 p.m. on August 31st, 2022 through the Zoom online meeting platform. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Butler. Discussion. I just wanted to touch on this uh, application briefly. The applicant have requested the town consider rezoning a portion of the NOTA property from open space conservation to residential medium density to accommodate a 47 lot residential subdivision with two new streets and provision for connection to an adjacent parcel of land that could also be developed as a residential subdivision. And so there's been some confusion among residents as they're with this development because there's been some clearing of land subject to um, whether there's been clearing a land subject to the rezoning process. And the majority of the property uh, in this motion is already zoned as the R2 zoning and where this development is permitted to occur. 
and that the land that's been cleared has been within that particular zone and um, it's not been disturbing the existing open space conservation in the area. And so as an example, the infill lots along Hopewell Gardens and Concentric Bay Highway uh, from this property didn't require rezoning. So uh, with this portion of land currently zoned as open space conservation, we've been working with the applicant to determine the suitability of the area. We've received correspondence from the provincial government that they don't consider this area as an open wetland. And um, given that information, we can move forward with the rezoning process and it wouldn't contravene with our um, policies of the municipal plan. So that is where we are today. If council feels we're in a position to rezone this, uh, after hearing from the public, we'll certainly be back to the table to request approval. Any further comment? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. 5N, Excuse committee me. report. Oh, I again have to declare conflict because of uh, Tenshu Place and also because 392 Concession Bay Highway, which is uh, very close proximity to my in laws. Five N committee report. Be it so resolved that the decisions and recommendations made at the planning development committee meeting on July fourth, twenty twenty two, be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors. Uh, dis any discussion? All in favor? Contra uh, contrary minded. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Get Councillor uh, Butler back, please. Councillor Barrett, uh, thank you for your yeoman service this evening, doing 14 items for the planning committee. i just like to say that Rex Hillier owes you uh, for picking up the slack uh, this week for sure. So thank you for that. We'll move on to recommendations of engineering and public works committee chair, Councillor Gerard Tilly. Thank you, Worship, and I believe that was trial by fire for Councillor Murray, at his first, his first time at the helm. Uh, just uh, two items from the public works uh, committee meeting. Uh, 6A is an approval to award 2022 street paving, upgrading, and sidewalks. And of course, uh, all of the, uh, I guess the list for all of the work that we're gonna do is available on the town's website. Uh, I don't I don't have all the street names here because there's, there's a ton of them for sure. So anybody got any questions or whatever, they can certainly go down to town's website and look at the uh, particular streets and areas where we're doing some of our work. So be it so resolved that approval be given to award the 2022 street upgrading, paving, and sidewalk program to Dexter Construction Company Limited for the total of $2,595,363.99, HSD included. So moved. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss. Discussion. I think it's fantastic that we are continuing the sidewalk uh, uh, installation program yep. that we started, I believe, four years ago. This will be our fifth year of sidewalks, mainly in school zones, I believe, and uh, that uh, increases safety in our school zones, something we're very keen at as well. And uh, it's good to keep upgrading those roads because they don't last forever, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And your worship, uh, the next one is the blank on the recommendation, but before I do read that, I just wanna touch on a few notes that uh, some things that are happening throughout the town. Uh, the first is phase 48 of our water and sewer project. Uh, the contractor has begun work in the areas of Mission Road in Seal Cove and Glebe Road in Foxtrap. This, uh, this project will continue throughout the summer and, and into the fall. Uh, we're also doing some water and sewer upgrades in certain areas in the town. Uh, of course, I'm sure there's a lot of Motors uh, do know by now that the contractor is working in the Kellegrews area along Route 60, Conception Bay Highway in Kellegrews. Uh, traffic delays should and are expected. Uh, water disrupt disruption will be required throughout the project. However, the town was scheduled as best as possible to allow sufficient notice and least disruption as possible. And construction, construction on this project is uh, expected to continue to the fall as well. And uh, I might add as well, this is not, even though it's the construction is to the fall. It's not all on Road 60. This one is going actually out Pound Road, so we, we hope to get the Road 60 side uh, done in the very near future. 
And the uh, 2022 street upgrades, as I just mentioned, paving and sidewalks, we anticipate that street work will begin in the next uh, several days. Uh, residents will notice as well that Easton's Road and Parents Road pedestrian activated traffic lights. Uh, those lights are currently in flashing yellow mo mode, which basically means that folks uh, get ready. Those lights will be uh, back in action in the next uh, few weeks for sure. Uh, staff has uh, have also started the school zone implementation. Uh, our staff is working through uh, installing the infrastructure required to commence uh, school zones for September, and we will expect that work to continue well through the summer in July and August. As well, uh, our bulk garbage drop-off program will continue. Uh, and the next one will be on Saturday, July 16th, and Saturday, July the 23rd, and details of that program can be found on the town's website. Uh, the town has one of the largest construction project seasons in recent years, and we'd like to thank the residents in advance for their support and patience during this productive time. And the blank of recommendation, be it so resolved that the recommendation decisions made at committee meeting of July 5th, 2022 be accepted as presented, so moved. Wonderful. And oh, I'm back. Um, so, uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Dilley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. We're just having a brief chat here. Okay, so, and, and just to be clear, Councillor Tilly, you had declared a conflict previously. You weren't involved in any discussion or involved in this matter at all. It's just listed in the document for the blanket to note that something was discussed regarding this earlier. And uh, you can leave the room now and we'll have Councillor uh, Councillor Butler read the recommendation. Do we need to rescind that approval uh, by a vote of council? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, um, is, so I guess moving, uh, could I have somebody move a, a motion to rescind the approval? Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Goss, seconded by Councillor Connors. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried? Okay, so Councillor Tilly, if you wanna take my, my apologies, Your Worship, I, I haven't declared a conflict of interest this much in all my four terms on council, so uh, that one slipped by. Yeah, and, uh, and there's not many of us here to declare either, so. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Councillor Butler. Okay. 6B, Engineering and Public Works Committee meeting blanket recommendation. Be it so resolved that the recommendation and decisions made on July 5th, 2022 meeting will be accepted as presented and the list is below, so moved. Seconder, Councillor Barrett. Discussion, all in favor. Contrary minded, carried. I can bring Councillor Tilly back to chambers, please.
Okay, next up we have recommendations of the Recreation and Leisure Services Committee. Chair Councillor Moore, so Councillor Moore is with us this evening. I understand Councillor Connors will be doing the honors? That is correct, Mr. Mayor. It's your show. Councillor Morris got caught up in the Air Canada trying to get back from uh, a trip to Ottawa. And she, I think she arrived back this afternoon or earlier this, around supper time. Yeah, it was late this afternoon she got back in. I don't think it was just Air Canada though. I think the airport in Toronto is a bit messy no matter where you're flying to from or with. Yeah, probably so, yeah. Uh, the recommendations of the Recreation and Leisure Services Committee for the meeting held on July 5th, 2022. Uh, the first one, 7A, approval to call a request for proposals for uh, the audiovisual services agreement for special events. Be it so resolved that the town proceed to call a request for proposals for audiovisual services agreement for special events, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Tilly, discussion? Uh, this is just the uh, Call for, for anything that we need for special events, audiovisual stages, stuff like that. And we have a contract for, for that. All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Uh, 7C, approval to award tender 20, 2208 supply and installation of fiber, fiberglass shingle roof system for, the rec for recreation. Be it so resolved to award tender 2208-08, supply and installation of fiberglass shingle roof system for the recreation complex to roof tech systems at a cost of $305,720.40 plus HST, so moved. Seconder, Councillor Butler, discussion? Uh, this is the uh, repairs to our swimming pool, our recreation center for to the roof that is badly needed and uh, will be done during the shutdown period of this period, I think. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried? 70, ratification of the approval to award fencing for the community park. Be it so resolved that the town uh, award the purchase and installation of picket fencing for the community park to the Grand Concourse Authority in for the amount of $28,514.16, taxes included, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, oh, sorry I missed the, missed the Deputy Mayor. Councillor Barrett, all in, uh, any further discussion on that? No, this is the fence that has been uh, for the park as part of the construction of the park, it's just awarding the fence portion. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And uh, next and finally is the blanket recommendation. Uh, so before that, a couple of things, before I read it, uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. Uh, we had some discussion on the uh, safety netting up, by, up going up Route 60, Richard Parsons Field. Some concerns have been raised for that. We've asked staff to go back and do a, uh, provide a cost estimate for the supply, <coughs> supply and installation of the netting to the field. And they're gonna report back to us once, once they get that cost estimate. For those that are wondering, Thomas Amusements is planned to be here in September, the 21st to the 25th. For anyone who's wondering if Thomas Amusements coming to Conception Bay South. Uh, the community better challenge. Unfortunately, we ended up ranking seventh overall in the province. They only took the top four. Not sure what happened there, but the, uh, we, we ended up seven. So at the committee meeting, we discussed and staff are going to. and. And as council, I guess we're going to next year work with the worker groups in the, in the community and the schools and everything like that 
to uh, try to ensure that we're, we're better prepared to help log all the activity that happens in conception research because we are better than seventh and we can certainly do better than seventh next year. Well, Councillor Connors, we, we finished seventh and I noted that the, all the communities that are ahead of us are much smaller than us. Anyway, I'm not sure how the rankings work, but uh, for a community our size, we finished first above all the major municipalities, the larger municipalities across the province. So that's uh, very good. And, uh, and I wanna thank all the residents who logged their minutes uh, and their time uh, towards uh, the Community Better Challenge. And uh, uh, from this effort, uh, we're going to uh, give it another go next June from June 1st to June 30th, and we're gonna see if we can get from, we went from 8th to 7th, well, we're gonna aim for better than 7th next year, and I think we can do it. And I think that, uh, I think that the Town of Concession Bay South is way more active than the minutes that were logged uh, is during this process. So we just gotta get all those people out there on the trailways and in the, in the facilities and that are in their sporting events and so forth to log their minutes. I think that we'll show much better next year. But it was, a, it was a great uh, the, for the people that did do it and uh, thank you to doing it and keep the app and we'll charge it up again next June 1st for sure. Mm -hmm. It took us a few years to uh, get win Hockeyville, but we won it. Yes, that's right. We'll, so. we'll be back. We'll be back. Uh, um, yep, go ahead. I just wanted to give a, a recap, I suppose, as well, of the Canada Day celebrations that happened since our last meeting. So... Uh, we had a very successful event again this year. It started off with our Memorial Day service with the Royal Canadian Legion out at the Monument of Honor. Uh, then families enjoyed Canada Day celebrations at the Recreation Complex. That included the cake cutting, the barbecue with the Lions Club, uh, bouncy castles, and musical entertainment from Bacaloo. Uh, the fireworks show was probably one of the best that's, that I, I've seen or heard in uh, a long time since I guess it was fabulous and we received a lot of very positive feedback from residents and overall it was a great Canada Day celebration. Uh, just uh, some important dates here now July 21st and 20 August 4th as uh, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, mentioned it's the drive-in bingo in support of the Field of Dreams. August 3rd is the Family Fun Day up at the Still in uh, Seal Cove. Uh, August 8th is a bike rodeo. August 13th, Pirate Day is tentatively scheduled for Topsail Beach, but that needs to be confirmed yet, but that is a date to keep in mind. And August 11th, we have another senior busing outing, and I'm not sure where they're going, but the, uh, there's one planned. So after all of that, the blanket statement is, be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions at the Recreational and Leisure Services Committee meeting of July 5th, 2022 be accepted as presented, so moved. Seconder, Councillor Butler. Uh, and uh, for discussion, uh, Councillor Connors, I just want to also mention uh, we did the uh, audiovisual uh, and uh, uh, earlier, but of course, a number of these events wouldn't be able to happen if we didn't have that contract and doing that work. And uh, I was remiss earlier in not mentioning that also on Canada Day, of course, here in Newfoundland and Labrador, it's Memorial Day. And I was very uh, proud to be able to lay a wreath on behalf of the town. Uh, at the Monument of Honor out front of our building here on that day. And I want to thank the uh, Royal Canadian Legion Branch 15 Telegrews for the work they do to ensure that the Memorial Day service uh, continues and the proper honor uh, to those who fought to ensure the freedoms that we enjoy today uh, are maintained and celebrated and honored every single year. And uh, it was a great event and very pleased to be there. So. Uh, uh, thank you to them and thank you to the staff from the town that actually worked at Canada Day and Memorial Day uh, as well to make sure that it was a, a great event uh, that it was. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carry. Thank you, Councillor Connors. Moving on to recommendations of the Financial and Administrative Services Committee Chair, Deputy Mayor Andrea Goss, we have to pay some bills for all the stuff that we've just done, so let's do it. Thank you, Mayor Banks. 
So the recommendations of Financial Administrative Services Committee of July the 5th are as follows. Uh, 8A, uh, accounts payable checks. Uh, be it so resolved that approval be given to pay accounts payable checks totaling $601,652.87 as per the attached report, so moved. Seconder. Seconder. Councillor Tilly, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. 8B, manual checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay manual checks totaling $142,000. Four hundred and thirty two dollars and twenty twenty six cents. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Eight C are direct payments. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify direct payments totaling four hundred and twenty one thousand three hundred dollars and eighty seven cents. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Tilly, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 8D is the capital invoice approval. And this is the bigger one. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay capital invoices in the amount of $974,778 and no cents as per the attached listing. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, discussion? Um, Mayor Bent, this is our, all of our capital works projects. Uh, our library, community park, um, lift station upgrades, our traffic lights that we are, are installed now. We're just waiting for them to be uh, the activation to be finalized. Uh, the um, steady Waterbrook culvert upgrade, our 2022 streets program, our phase 48 water and sewer, uh, 2022 water and sewer upgrades, Duns Hill pilot project. Uh, wastewater treatment plant infrastructure protection, shoreline stabilization, uh, uh, lots of things going on. So uh, that's what all that money is for all those projects. Yeah, there's a lot going on from one end of town to the other for sure. And uh, one thing I'm pleased to see is the, uh, the lights, uh, the, uh, the pedestrian activated lights at, uh, at the Interpretation Center area at Eason's Road and at Perrin's Road are now flashing yellow. This is the testing period, and when yep. the testing period is done, uh, Newfoundland Power will activate the lights for us, and I understand that the testing period is at least a week, so they came on Friday, I believe. They'll test for at least till this Friday or probably in the next week, and then uh, the lights will be activated uh, as pedestrians want to cross safely in both those areas. I'm very pleased to be able to, after such a long wait and delays through COVID and so forth, mm -hmm. to finally get to this point where we get those lights going. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Uh, 8E, tax and other receivable accounts. Uh, be it so resolved that approval be given to adjust tax and other receivable accounts as follows. There is two tax accounts there, uh, each around uh, uh, $1,200 each. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler, discussion? These are for two uh, businesses that closed and uh, we're looking for, uh, uh, they, they signed affidavits for the dates their business closed, retroactive, and the town is, we are issuing um, credits. Yeah. Pro, pro, uh, pro aid yeah. uh, refunds on those. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Next item F. 8F is Personnel Public Works Supervisor. Be it so resolved that approval be given to confirm Des Power in the position of Public Works Supervisor as per the terms and conditions outlined in the employment contract. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett, discussion? And Des Power has been with the town, from my understanding, uh, a little over 12 months, and this is to uh, confirm his permanent employment. Okay, that's fantastic. Yep. Um, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Last item, 8G, for the Financial and Administrative Services Committee report. Be it so resolved that approval be given to accept the decisions and recommendations 
of the Financial and Administrative Services Committee of July 4th as follows. And there was a number of items discussed, as you can see on the, on the uh, listing there. So moved. Seconder. Council Connors, discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Goss. Now, recommendations of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee, Chair, Councillor Christine Butler. Excuse me, uh, Madam Chair, I have to declare a conflict on the first one, 2570 Topsail Road, as I have a family member who falls under the category of conflicts to conflict of interest guidelines who lives close to the area. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I am in the same boat. I uh, am near the property and declared a conflict on Thank this. Thank Councilor Barrett. You're losing your audience, Councilor Butler. I'm going to read the recommendation quick. Okay, Your Worship, uh, Recommendations of Economic Development and Tourism Committee, uh, 9A, 2570 Topsail Road. Be it so resolved that approval be given for the Grand Concourse Authority to complete the site work at 2570 Topsail Road for use of the property as an extension of the adjacent park at a cost of 4,015,955. Five. Funds are available in the so noted account. Seconder, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Goss. Discussion? Yes, Your Worship, if I can get my microphone to work right there. <laughs> Approval was granted by email on June 14, 2022 to proceed with the site work at 2570 Topsail Road and simply requires ratification this evening. The cost to prepare the site for use was 14,015955, five, inclusive of HST. The town is grateful for a partnership with the Conception Bay South Parks Commission for providing 10,000 toward the project. The Community Garden Committee has provided eight flower beds that are incorporated into the national environment, adding to the beautification effort. The parking space is ready to be used and we hope residents and visitors enjoy their revitalized space. And this is all wonderful news. Uh, yes, Councillor Butler, it's fantastic driving by there each day, seeing some, some uh, positive activity happening at this old business site there along Topsail Road. and. Uh, those, uh, those planters, I guess they call them, uh, that are uh, showing up a little bit at a time and a uh, big pile of, uh, of uh, topsoil is there. And so some a lot of work is gonna happen and it's, uh, it's just great to see this property that has sat vacant there for so long to be actually used in such a positive uh, community way with so many groups involved in it and uh, look forward to seeing how they, uh, how they proceed. And uh, I know that the uh, community garden actually had a call out for help uh, a week or so ago for people to come and help them do some planting and I'm sure that uh, they will again so sh people should watch for the community garden committee uh, as they progress with this site but it's great to see. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Aye. Carried. And we can get Councillor Tilly and Councillor Barrett. Before I read the blanket recommendation, I do have a bit of news that comes out of economic and development tourism, and there's always a lot of good news comes out of our committee and what the town does. First of all, the MMSB composting program. The committee received the briefing on the annual MMSB backyard composting program. When it is offered in the fall, the town will be participating. Details will be circulated once we receive the information. National Adaptation Strategy. Staff briefed the committee on the public engagement process that has been initiated by the Government of Canada for the development of Canada's first national adaptation strategy. The town will be providing input into the federal strategy and are encouraging the public to participate as well. The deadline for input is July 15, 2022. Garden Day in Conception Bay South. The year of the Garden Committee planned a successful first national Garden Day. Participating community groups included the Calgary's Economic Ecological Enhancement Program, Chamberlain's Park Action Committee, the Country Garden Club of Conception Bay South, Manuel's River, and the CBS Community Garden. 
Participating businesses included Hickey's Greenhouse, Home Hardware, Good to Grow NL, and Johnny Appleseed NL. A photo gallery has been initiated on the Year of the Garden page on the town's website. The committee extended appreciation to the Year of the Garden Committee for their efforts. Communities in Bloom. The town is participating in Communities in Bloom, a non-competitive initiative where judges visit the town and provide an assessment based on six categories. The town last participated in the initiative in 2012. This year's visit will take place on Friday, August 5th. All residents and businesses are encouraged to ensure that they do their part to keep their properties in tip-top shape. This is a great opportunity to show the sense of pride that exists within our community. There have been many improvements throughout the town since the last judge's visit, but one major initiative has been the automated garbage collection program. It was noted that some properties still have wooden bins in the end of the driveways in the town. Residents can complete a form on the town's website to request the town to remove their old wooden garbage boxes. And the last note here on the Long Pond Harbor Authority. As a member of the Long Pond Harbor Authority, the town is required to appoint two individuals to serve on the board of directors. The town will issue a call for expressions of interest to replace two existing directors whose terms will be expiring in the coming months. The deadline for interested candidates to apply will be August 4, 2022. The expression of interest will be posted on the town's website and social media channels as well as the shoreline. It is anticipated appointments will be made by council at a public meeting in September. And now I'll read the blanket recommendation. Excuse me, uh, Madam Chair, before you do that, um, even though we, we did the, I declare conflict at number 9A on 2570 Topsail Road, I do see that it's listed in the blanket recommendation, so I'll uh, declare conflict again as well. And I, I will be under the same boat. <laughs> And a blanket recommendation, which is 9B, Economic, Developments and Economic Development and Tourism Committee Report Recommendation. Be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions made at the Economic Development and Tourism Committee meeting of July 6, 2022 be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors. Discussion. Uh, All in, yep. No, I, I just wanted to mention the MMS, the backyard recycling program or composting program. It's been a number of years since we participated and there has been a lot of discussion on social media, people wondering why we're not participating. So I'm pleased that we're going to do all the investigation and, and get back into the program for next year and be able so uh, residents can get their uh, composting bins from the town. Yeah, exactly, uh, Councillor Connors. Uh, it's great to be able to get back into this program. And uh, one of the things that uh, we spend a lot of money on is uh, dumping our garbage off at the at the regional facility at Robin Hood Bay. And of course, uh, we pay by the pound. And the heaviest part of your garbage is the stuff that could end up in a composter and not go to the land area, the the recycling and uh, and the regional uh, facility. Uh, it's something that uh, we could could be used in your garden. It could be used uh, uh, by the community uh, uh, garden committee or, or others that might want the compost uh, uh, as well. So uh, uh, not putting that in the garbage uh, would be a great help uh, for the costs of uh, our garbage going to the uh, regional facility and, of course, uh, could help uh, gardens and gardening throughout the uh, town. Uh, so it's uh, great to be able to... Uh, uh, go forward into that initiative again uh, this fall. So I guess we await for the MMSB to uh, uh, make their uh, awards and so forth. And I believe in the past we were able to provide the uh, the composters, the proper composters, so that they're they're safe and they're not uh, and used properly. They don't attract rodents and uh, and cause a great uh, concern. Uh, some people seem to think they do, and uh, and uh, we do so at a reduced cost, so that the residents can get into the program fairly inexpensively. So it's great to be able to get back into that and I'm glad that the council supports that initiative. Any further discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. And we have two councillors we need to bring back into the room. Maybe, we're not done yet. <laughs>
Okay. Thank you, Councillor Butler. And uh, so we move on to other committee reports and we have a uh, naming committee and they've been busy. So I'm going to call upon a member of the naming committee to uh, speak to the matter. And I believe that's Councillor Tilly. Thank you, Worship. Uh, earlier this year, the town released a call for expressions of interest for naming uh, the buildings that will house the Conception Bay South Public Library. Our naming committee is therefore making a recommendation for council approval to name the building the Clarence J. Morgan Building. Mr. Morgan was, was all about building community. He believed in education and experiential learning. He worked in partnership with businesses, community organizations, and all levels of government, and was committed to long-term fiscal responsibility, sustainability, and livability in CBS, which are very much in line with the town's guiding principles. A cherished family man and prominent businessman in Conception Bay South, Mr. Morgan passed peacefully away on November 28, 2021. We believe naming this building in his honor is a very fitting acknowledgement to his life's work that was instrumental in helping to establish and grow Conception Bay South. I personally had the opportunity to know Mr. Morgan over the years, and this is a well-deserved honor this evening, and I'm sure his, uh, his family is very, very proud. So be it so resolved that the building under construction at Remembrance Square that will house the Conception Bay South Public Library be named the Clarence J. Morgan Building, so moved. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss, discussion? I'll just take a moment, uh, if I could, uh, Councillor Tilly, uh, to uh, echo your comments and, uh, of course, the contribution uh, of Clarence Morgan to the, uh, to the business community, to the community at large, uh, here in Conception Bay South is uh, is hard to match. Um, you know uh, the the print that he put on uh, many areas of this town and uh, and helped lead the way in uh, in developing our town uh, was fantastic. And uh, to have uh, his name uh, adorn the uh, the new public library building uh, here in Conception Bay South, a, a centerpiece and uh, a prominent place, uh, is very fitting uh, to honor his legacy and his contribution to the town of Conception Bay South. And I'm very pleased to be able to, uh, to uh, have that recommendation come before our council here and uh, to have that work begin on making sure that uh, his name is up and ready to go when our public library is ready to open there. And of course, it is the Clarence J. Morgan building. Uh, so for decades to come, no matter what that building is used for, it will be the Clarence J. Morgan building. So. Very fitting, I believe. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Okay. Are there any other committee reports of council that anybody wants to report on from their endeavors? Yes, Councillor Barrett. I uh, just want to briefly mention on June 22nd, the Parks Commission had a meeting and our green team is here in the community, very active. They're currently working on a, a shoreline naturalization project in Calgaroos, and they'll be at our community gardens, Emmanuel's River and Chamberlain's Park. So certainly if you see them, feel free to say hello. Uh, we're happy that we have them again this year. It's great work for great labor, so it's, it's good. Any other uh, reports from committees? Barring that, um, we're going to be back here again on August 16th, uh, getting into the later days of summer then, but uh, lots of work happens between here and there and committee meetings and, uh, and uh, through meetings uh, and Zoom and so forth. Uh, so the work of the town continues uh, in earnest and we'll be back here on August 16th to present our next public council meeting. So thank you all for uh, your efforts and work over the past few weeks and bringing us here. and. Uh, at this point, I will call for a motion for adjournment. Moved by Councillor Tilly, seconded by Councillor Butler. We are adjourned. <laughs>